Hi everyone, my name is Eric Ratamero and I work in the research IT department at the Jackson Laboratory, which is a non-profit research institute based in Bar Harbor, Maine. And today in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about Fiji and how to do some basic things in, in that tool. Uh, I consider Fiji to be the most useful tool in the in the pocket of a bioimage analyst because there's so much stuff that it's already been done in Fiji in terms of plugins, in terms of extensions. So chances are, if you need to do something, it has been done in Fiji before. So you can just reuse what other people have done. So I will start by just showing you how to open an image, for example. So there are multiple ways you can do that in Fiji. One of them, of course, is if you go to File, Open, but even easier is to just drag an image. So I'll just grab that image, drag it into the window, and that's an image open. And in this case, you can see it's an image with three channels. I'm showing all the three channels at the same time here. So if you have an image that is on a proprietary format that requires bioformats to open, Fiji can also do that. So here, just as an example, I'll try to drag this uh, LIF image here into Fiji. And you will see it will open, but it will open uh, a single image. There it is. So it will open one image with three channels. While in reality, if you look at the file size here, it's something like 860 megabytes. So of course, that's not one single image. So if you go to file, import, and you have to scroll down a little bit, bioformats, I will pick that same LIF image. And you will see that what I get is this bioformat series options window that gives me the choice of, in this case, 35 different series. So that file actually contains 35 different images, each one that is 2048 by 2048 with three planes. And in this case, the planes are just different channels. So hiding behind that one image we got, if we just dragged and dropped, we actually have 35 images. And here, for example, instead of picking series one, I can pick series 22, for example. And you will see that the thing that's open here is very different from the image we had originally. So now I'm just going to show you how to navigate different dimensions in Fiji. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this 4D image. It's also a DV image. In this case, because it's a relatively simple one, you can just drag and drop and it will do a pretty good job. So you can see that this is an image that uh, if you look at this, this bar here at the top of the image, it will show you that it has four channels. So it's showing channel one of four. It's showing Z slice one of 40. So it has 40 different Z slices. So this is essentially a 4D image. That's why it has that name. So it has two dimensions that are being shown here, plus channels, plus Z slices. And the way you navigate between these dimensions is by using these bars here at the bottom. So you see here that I have four different channels. Two of them look very dark. This one looks just a, a few spots. First channel looks pretty bright. And then you have multiple Z slices and you can also use this bar to navigate between them. And this is essentially changing the Z position of the plane you're seeing of this image. So specifically in terms of colors or channels in this case, there are a few more things you can do to display different channels differently. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly adjust brightness and contrast in this channel. So I go to image, adjust, brightness and contrast. And I will just press auto here. And you see that now I can see things that were there and I just couldn't see with the settings I had before. So now if I navigate through the Z slices, the thing that looked completely empty is actually full of activity. And then I'll do the same thing for this channel. I will pick a slice like here and I am going to go to image, adjust brightness and contrast, and I'm going to press auto. And all of a sudden you can see things that were there and you couldn't see before. 
So the same thing as the green channel, you can all see things. So I said you can show colors in different ways. So the main thing you're going to use for that is in image color channels tool. So that's a tool that will allow you to change how you're seeing the colors here. So for example, if I change from color to composite, it's going to put all four channels together in one single image, no matter which channel you pick here at the bottom. So you can see that by changing the channel here, I changed the color of the bar here at the top. So I'm still selecting different channels. I'm just visualizing all of them at the same time. Alternatively, you can choose instead of color, you can choose grayscale, and then every channel is going to be displayed in grayscale. And that's normally the way I prefer to visualize things because you actually get a better contrast visually by doing things in grayscale rather than in red or green or blue. And you can see that, especially here in this first channel, you'll see if I change this to color, you will be able to see less detail than when I have grayscale. I think that's particularly visible, especially here on the right hand side. So I'll change it back. Okay, finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to go through a very simple segmentation workflow. So segmentation is one of the most common problems in Fiji and in image analysis in general. And the problem in general is you have an image like this and you want to identify individual objects. So in this case, by eye, it's very easy. This is clearly an object. This is an object. These two are two separate objects. So for our vision, it's very easy. It's not as easy for a computer. So I will show you uh, two ways of doing segmentation here. The first one is by simple thresholding. And the second one is by using a deep learning method. So for the first one, what I'm going to show you first is I'm going to go to image adjust threshold and you will see that I actually want to check dark background because clearly the image has a dark background and you see that I can play around here with how much stuff is detected. So for example, if I did something like this, you can see that I can segment between background and foreground pretty well. And if I did something like this, it would be pretty poor. It would just recognize these pixels here as foreground. So. This is essentially just saying everything above, in this case, 27 is foreground. Everything below 27 is background. Of course, this is a very um, rough way of choosing foreground and background. And I had to actually manually adjust things here. So of course, that doesn't scale if you have thousands of images. So one other way of doing this is by going to image, adjust, auto threshold. And in this case, you're going to see that there are lots of different methods you can pick here. It's always a good idea to try all of them first. So I'll press OK. And you see that most of them do a pretty good job. It's difficult to see exactly which method is which here because the names of the methods are very small under the images here. So let me just try to zoom into, for example, uh, you see that mean error has a little bit of, of uh, pixels in the background that are, are being detected. But minimum, for example, does a really clean job. So let's say we should use minimum. And there is no right or wrong method. It comes down to what method works for your images. So we are going to use minimum as a method. And I'll press OK, and it's going to threshold it. Okay, now if you look here in this bottom bar in Fiji, when I go over the image, you will see that the background values are all zero and the foreground values are all 255. So that means I only have foreground and background, which means this is a binary image. And the binary image is the result of a segmentation. So I have only foreground and background now. So the second part of segmentation is I need to do something called a connected component analysis. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each individual pixel and see which pixels around it are also foreground. And I'm going to grow these regions until I get individual objects. So this is done in Fiji by going to analyze 
analyze particles. And there is a lot of things you can do here. You can uh, filter things by size. So for example, you can filter very small things that tend to be the background. Um, you can change what the output is going to look like. So I'm going to show it to, I'm going to change it to outlines here. And there are things like, for example, exclude regions in the edges. You can include holes. You can add them to the RI manager, which is a very useful tool and so on and so forth. So I'm going to press OK. And you will see that because I exclu excluded things on the edges, I now have this here being this region here. So I exclude this one because it's on the edge. And you'll see that, for example, these two are merged into a single region. These two here cease to exist because they're touching the edge. These two are still merged as a single region as well. So it does a decent job, but not a great job. So there are things you can do to improve it. So one thing, for example, is you can use something called a watershed algorithm. So if I click on watershed here, you'll see that, for example, we divided these two into two, we probably divided these two into two. It did some strange things here. It did some strange things here. But in general, it split the things that were separate objects, but were still being detected as one. So now if I redo the analyze particles with the same parameters, same everything, you'll see that now I get this region here that wasn't there because now it's not touching the edge anymore. It gets this region here, which as you might remember, is these two here. So it's only excluding the one that's actually touching the edge. It divided these two, it divided these two. You see they have separate numbers now. So this is already a pretty good uh, approximation of what the objects in the original image. So finally, now I'll close this and I'll reopen this image fresh. And I'm going to show you uh, a deep learning method to do the same thing. So this is the only change I've made from default Fiji. I just download Fiji, downloaded Fiji. You can see at the bottom bar in Fiji here, which version it is. It's 2.0 RC69. So for future reference, if you're watching this video in the future, you can know exactly which version I was using here. So the only change I made to default Fiji is I installed a plugin called Stardust. So if I go to plugins, Stardust, Stardust 2D, I have not changed any of these settings here. This is exactly what comes from, from the default. I will just press OK. And you'll see that it does a pretty good job of doing the same thing that we were trying to do by hand. So these two are much more well separated. These two have a much more well-defined border than the straight border they had before. And it has detected everything else just fine. So this is the power of deep learning working for you. So Stardust does a pretty good job in most fluorescent images. So I definitely recommend at least giving it a try. Sometimes you need to tweak the parameters a little bit to find what works for your images. But in general, it's really, really, really good. The way you would install Stardust is you will go to Help, Update. And that's, this is actually also the way you update things in Fiji, of course. So it's going to download the information about new packages. And sometimes that takes a little while. OK, so it tells me my image J is up to date because I just downloaded it. It's completely fresh. But the way you install new things is you go to Manage Update Sites. So if you click that, you get a huge list of things that have been developed by other people. And for example, the one that says CamDo here was actually developed by me. So you can actually develop new things and put them there for other people to use. So to install Stardust, what I did was I checked CSB Deep which is a deep learning uh, library from the CSPD in Dresden. And I checked Stardust. Uh, close this and apply changes here. And that's installed. So this is a very, very quick overview of very basic things that you can do in Fiji, of course. As I said, chances are if you have a problem in image analysis, someone has solved it using Fiji and there's a plugin somewhere to do more or less the thing you want. And of course, because Fiji is open source, you can write your own plugins and add them to the, the environment that you'll get there with update sites and everything. So that's going to be it for me today. 
and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to subscribe to the Jackson Laboratory channel on YouTube. And I'll see you next time.